What's going on y'all, it's the Kid J. Nolan here. Hey man, before we get into anything in this video, make sure that you like and share it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get all updates, hit the post notification bell. All right y'all, let's get into it. So it seems to me that this whole Ghost Rider conversation is never going away. Despite all of the different artists that have come out and talked about how they write with other artists in this studio, talk about their collaboration process. We've seen things come out for Kanye West. We've seen things come out with Drake. Nobody seems to still hold these guys to the same standard. However, when it comes to Cardi B, everybody is still up in arms on whether or not she writes her own bars, whether or not she's coming up with the whole concept from start to finish. People know that she writes or you know collaborates with Partisan Fontaine pretty frequently, and they basically have given him all of the writing credit for her music. They don't feel like she does anything in the studio except jump on the track. We all know that she got the new feature out with Fendi the Rapper called Point Me Too, and uh, she dropped a pretty dope verse on there. It's not really my type of music. This whole vibe just doesn't really gel with my personal taste as far as hip hop goes. But I understand that, you know, they're doing the drill rap over the house and juke beats right now. That's what's going on. That's what's in. Wasn't really crazy about Fendi the Rapper. You know, maybe you could come back with something else and I may listen to it. Cardi B's verse was digestible. It was listenable. Um, she had some bars in there that was cool, but just on that beat, that style, it just didn't really suit me. But now you got Spotify head of urban music, Carl Cherry, who came out and said, I don't care who writes it. Cardi B is hard AF. OK, people got under the comments and was basically saying, you know, she's delivering it really well. Well, Cardi B didn't take it well. She actually decided to respond to Carl Cherry and say, hey. I write this shit. You could come to the studio session and see me get busy. Y'all gonna stop trying to put everybody else's name on my bars. I do this now. And along with that, she actually posted the credits to the record. All right. So on this song, you got the credits of produced by Jordan Loud. It says written by Fendi the Rapper and Cardi B. And of course, you also have the primary artist Fendi the Rapper and Cardi B. Now, Cardi has definitely addressed the ghostwriting rumors numerous times. Partisan Fontaine has actually addressed his hand in co-writing numerous times. People that actually understand the music business and how songs are made, this is not anything worth talking about. It's not really worth defending or anything like that, but to common fans these days, ever since the whole Meek Mill and Drake conversation happened with their beef, now we have people that have no knowledge of how songs are written, how songs are produced, how songs get passed around from studio to studio. They don't have any knowledge about all of this stuff, but now they're analyzing everybody as if we're on ESPN looking at basketball players, right? So now we're talking about artists and their writing skills as if we're looking at Kobe Bryant and judging his three-point percentage, his free throw percentage, his field goal percentage, how many shots per game they take. Now we're looking at artists and evaluating, okay, well, this person does this better this person does this better and we really don't know what the fuck these people are doing in the studio because we're not there with them but in this video i did want to go ahead and play y'all some audio clips of cardi b and partisan fontaine talking about how they work in the studio okay so i got a clip of cardi b when she went on vlad and she talked about how she's been writing her music ever since the gangsta bitch days okay she came in writing her own shit she still writes her own shit it's not like she came into the game and was just ushered in with a notebook and somebody told her to go record partisan fontaine he actually had numerous interviews with like sway and different people early on in the game when he got discovered after bodak yellow and all of that stuff and then he put out his own project so he was going around doing interviews and of course everybody wanted to know how did you meet cardi how did y'all come into working together so he actually explained it so i'm gonna go ahead and play these clips for y'all i guess a lot of people just assume that you are a ghostwriter or you got you know someone's just writing for you but you actually do all your own shit yeah, um, the thing is that um, I, I'm from New York. I'm from New York, and I listen to hip hop like practically my whole life. And then, as I'm writing things, I, I study when these guys be freestyling, what is considered bars, what are considered metaphors, and it's just like the. And this is why I'm so grateful that I went to school, because I get to, I get to put things together. Like a lot, my vocabulary is not the greatest, but I do read. I just decide to be, I just decide to go this route because it's like street lingo, like street lingo, like what's up? When you may have to help out a female artist, how do you tap in like that? Um, 
the thing, the thing, I only help too many, but when mm-hmm. I work with Cardi, like, she has her own ideas, you know what I'm saying? She, right. She's always been this personality. She's always been a star way before music. Mm-hmm. So me having my way with words, it's, it's easy for me to help her, like, just get her own thoughts out, you know what I'm saying? Or mm-hmm. just rearrange something that she might say, like, all right, nah, they, yeah, that's a bar, but just put this in front of that, you know what I'm saying? So it's easy to do so. And it's just, like, what people want to hear from a person, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so it's... it's that's how I feel like my gift is. I got a gift of words. She got a personality. Mm. Let's help. Let me, I just helped her Merge get it out. Okay, it up. Yeah. Next thing I want to do is show you guys some of the writing credits on Cardi's song so that you understand what you're looking at, what you're hearing, and what's really going into this stuff. All right. So now we have Tomorrow Too by Glorilla featuring Cardi B, another feature performed by Cardi B and Glorilla, written by Antonio Anderson Jr., Bill Collis. Almanzar, that's Cardi B's name. That's her real name. She's in the writing credits. You got Gloria Woods, that's Glorilla. Javon Anderson, Jordan Thorpe. Jordan Thorpe, that's Partisan Fontaine. So yes, you do see Party here, but as explained in this previous video, Cardi comes into the studio with ideas. She comes in the studio with bars that she already has formatted in her head that she wants to put to music. He's the one that's gonna sit down and analyze it and say, okay, that's a good idea, but let's modify that. Let's change that. Let's put this word here, put that word there. Let's put this bar here. Let's put this bar here. Let's put this bar in front of the one that you came up with so that we could have a nice lead up bar. That's a good setup. This is going to be the punch. And then we could come with the next thing. This is stuff that all the top rappers in the game have all talked about how they go in the studio. They may have their homeboys. They may have other rappers in the studio and they say, oh, that's a hard ass bar. But maybe you should say it like this or say it like that. Rappers like Jadakiss, Styles P, some of the most revered Lyricists in hip hop have talked about how they've had help formatting their bars. However, all of a sudden, because Cardi B has somebody kind of on payroll helping her do that all the time, y'all want to say, oh, that's less than. But again, nobody looks at Kanye West and really thinks about that. Yeah, there was a conversation around it. But when you turn on a Kanye song, you're not really thinking who wrote it. I do. People in the industry do. People that know what's going on. Yeah, it's been introduced in our minds, so now it's a thought. You turn on Dr. Dre, you turn on Diddy, these people have been getting written for their entire career, and it's not a big deal. Cardi B didn't come into the game with the intention of being the number one lyricist, the greatest writer of all time. She's never said that. She's never actually asked for that accolade. She just wants to come in here, be entertaining, have fun, make her money, and be iconic. And that's all that you should really expect from her. Put it on the floor. Lotto featuring Cardi B. Performed by Cardi B and Lotto. Written by Alyssa Stevens. That's Lotto. Bill Collis Almanzar. That's Cardi. Born Immaculate. He's part of D4L. Broderick Thompson. Carlos Walker. That's Shouted Low. Daryl Clemens. These are guys that were all affiliated with the original song. Because you know you gotta have the done done at all in order to even make Put It On The Floor. It's an interpolation. It's not a sample. It's an interpolation. Then you got three producers on the song. Go Grizzly, Squat, and Pooh Beats. Their real names are also going to be in the writing credits because if you produce on a song, your name is also going to go in the writer credits. That's what composers are. Okay? So again, if you don't have any experience in the music industry, even though the credits can be written right in front of you, you still have to have a music business comprehension in order to understand what it is that you're reading. This is why a lot of artists go to record labels. They understand basic meanings of words. They look at a contract, they sign it, and then be regretting that shit later. Because yeah, you may understand what these words in isolation mean. You may understand what you think that sentence is supposed to be saying, but you really don't know what they're saying to you. You're gonna need somebody else. You're gonna need another set of eyes to decipher the code. Now I could see if Cardi B was putting out music and it just said performed by Cardi B and her real name was nowhere in the writing credits. Like every song she put out was just primarily written by Partisan Fontaine and she didn't have anything to do with it. Like I said, like a J-Lo or like an R&B singer that just goes in the studio and records what people put on paper for them. All right, maybe that could be a criticism. But again, I still don't see that being the case because again, she didn't come in with the intention of being a top 25 top 10 top 5 lyricists of all time she's not trying to be the greatest rapper of all time she's coming in this game with the intent like i said to make hits to be iconic and not every rapper is considered a lyricist we have a whole 
list a whole host of niggas out here right now that's writing all they motherfucking raps and the shits is absolute ass cans so let's be clear about all of this stuff when we have these conversations man this is why i made this channel this is why i go so hard to educate y'all and i want y'all to understand i am not barty gang okay i respect cardi b i like her a lot her personality shines through she's dope but guess what i also have a respect for Nicki minaj right She's an iconic artist. She was the only one that was out for years. She held down the stake and the flag and the mantle of female rap when nobody else was able to, when nobody else perhaps wanted to, and when no one else could, she did it. She has verses today that still can't be fucked with. Her pen, when she gets in her real zone, when she wants to fucking wrap circles around motherfuckers, she's gonna wrap circles around you. I did not make this channel to shit on Nicki Minaj. I did not make this channel to go against the barbs. I am not on nobody's payroll. I do not answer to none of you motherfuckers. I can like both of them simultaneously. I can respect Cardi B. I can respect Nicki Minaj. I can respect Lotto. I can respect Ice Spice. All in the same motherfucking sentence, okay? I am not commissioned by none of these motherfuckers. And I need y'all to understand that because I'm not finna go back and forth with y'all just because I praise one person or because I come to one person's defense in a video and you want to go and take the other side. Their time will come when they have some content or they make a statement that I'm going to cover on my channel. I'm going to give them the same equal opportunity to have love, to have backing, to have support. So please leave that shit on somebody else's content. At this point, I've said everything I care to say on the subject. Let me know what y'all think down below. Please be mature. Please be refined. Okay? Please be respectful. That's all I ask. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the post notification bell for all updates. I'll see y'all on the next one, man. Much love and respect. Peace. Beautiful people, thank you for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed the content. Make sure that you're liking and sharing these videos. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the post notification bell so you get all updates for all of my artists, my artist managers, songwriters, producers, etc. If you need a little bit of extra help with your career, man, make sure that you visit PinGameElite.com, okay? That's my website and my community for all upcoming rising music creators. I got two books on there, The Pin Game Portfolio Volume 1 and 2. They're going to give you a lot of insights into the music industry, how to monetize your career, how I make my money off of music because I am a full-time artist outside of doing YouTube videos. If you need some direct help, you can also book a consultation with me on the pen game elite website and i also have a pen game elite membership the free tier gives you access to all of these videos that i post on youtube and a community of people where you can engage but i do have the membership plus okay you can join that for 50 dollars a month or 500 dollars a year and i will actually go in and do all of the grunt work for you if you're not registering your songs on your pros if you're not with song trust or the mlc if all your collection agencies and all of that stuff are not up to par or up to date i will go in there and update all of that for you if you need help uploading your music to a distributor like distro kid united masters etc and you've been making mistakes you've been claiming content id on material that you really don't own hey man stop stealing people's money if you do this stuff the right way you're gonna make it anyway okay you can join the membership plus and again i will do the work for you and you're gonna get a free consultation every month just for joining you're also gonna get the two books for free as soon as you join the membership plus. All right. Much love and respect. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.